Now we're coming a little closer to home. John Gilmore from Farm Lab Diagnostics in Ireland is going to talk to us about anaplasmosis, an underdiagnosed disease in Irish cattle herds. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. And um, this presentation is going to outline um, some, some of the um, clinical aspects related to anaplasmosis and also some of the results that we've got on testing for anaplasmosis in our uh, testing laboratory over the last year. It's a, it's a disease that we've only started looking for um, over the last 12 months or so. Um, so anaplasmosis is um, a disease which is broken down into two different categories in cattle. cattle. Um, traditionally, tick-borne fever was, was described as um, have been anaplasma phagocytophilium and anaplasmosis being caused by anaplasma marginale. Um, Tick-borne fever is generally described as being a less severe disease, um, whereas anaplasmosis can uh, caused by A. marginale can be um, a very significant disease and potentially fatal. Um, the tick-borne fever is um, anaplasma present in the granulocytes or neutrophils, and um, in anaplasmosis caused by marginale, they're present in the erythrocytes. So that's responsible for some of the difference in the, or a lot of the difference in the severity and type of disease, in that you get a leukopenia associated with tick-borne fever, and you get a, an anemia associated with anaplasma marginale. Um, tick-borne fever. Um, can infect uh, several species, um, cattle, sheep, um, horses, and even humans, so it's a zoonotic disease, whereas anaplasma marginale is specific to ruminants. And the incubation period tends to be shorter in tick-borne fever compared to that of anaplasma marginale. Um, ticks, of course, are associated, it's a, it's a tick-borne disease, and ticks are responsible for spread of disease um, from animal to animal, so it's not contagious in that it needs to be spread by um, spread of, of blood from one to the other. However, um, in the case of anaplasma marginale, there's also a significant amount of spread that uh, can be caused by um, tabanid flies or horse flies and as a mechanical vector. And also then, obviously, um, things like um, injection needles um, can also be um, responsible for spread of infected blood from one cow to the other, resulting in infection in, in the, um, in the, from one cow to the next. Also, um, following a review of the literature as preparation for this presentation, um, the um, marginality is also associated with vertical transmission. So infection in the uh, last trimester of pregnancy can result in um, infection in, in the newborn calf. Um, so, as I said, the, the clinical signs can be more severe in the um, in marginality compared to phagocyte film, but um, and again, leukopenia co compared to an anemia um, with marginale. Dullness, fever, cough, general kind of um, uh, general kind of uh, symptoms that we associate with several diseases, including IBR, um, other viral diseases, can be attributed to both. Um, infections. Um, with marginale, as I said, you can get a severe anemia, you can get jaundice, and um, with both of them, it's responsible. And a lot of the time, the um, request for doing, carrying out this test result from um, a milk drop syndrome having occurred on a dairy farm. Um, anaplasma marginale uh, can be associated with abortion, and there are reports in the literature of. Um, mortality rates of nearly 50% um, in some outbreaks. Uh, treatment typically um, has been always described as being oxytetracycline, and amitacarb is also um, sometimes indicated for treatment of anaplasma marginale. Um, something similar to these diseases and, and say Babesia, which we would tend to see um, a lot of in, in our part of the world where I live in, in the west of Ireland. Um, these are diseases cause um, clinical disease in calves less than six months of age. And um, 
the clinical, the clinical signs become more severe the older the animal is when, the, when they're um, infected. So um, cows or adult cattle over two years, um, when they're introduced to pasture or farms where um, anaplasmosis is present, can um, have quite severe clinical syndromes or symptoms related to, to um, anaplasmosis. And a persistent carrier state can, um, will occur after infection um, with both um, phagocyte film and A marginale, and that persistent carrier state can last from anything from months up to um, lifelong. Um, diagnosis has been um, traditionally blood smears have been looked at for inclusion bodies, inclusion bodies in the granulocytes in the, in the case of um, tick-borne fever and inclusion bodies in the erythrocytes in the case of marginale. Um, there's an ELISA test looking for an antigen, uh, a major surface protein on the anaplasma, and reports of sensitivity in the literature relating to that vary from between 60 to 95 percent. There was also some issues relating to specificity described in that um, sometimes you can get cross-reactivity between the species of um, anaplasma. The gold standard test for diagnosis is uh, regarded as being the use of splenectomized calves, which um, from a practical point of view I think um, is um, of limited value in that you take blood from um, an infected animal and give it to a splen splenectomized calf and um, look for the inclusion bodies in the, in the blood of that calf. Obviously you get um, severe side effects related to that. Um, so PCR has been um, something that has been described recently in the literature as something uh, as a test of use for the diagnosis of um, um, anaplasma. The other issue in relation to blood smears, having spoken to some of my colleagues in the, um, in the, um, the veterinary diagnostic laboratories, is that um, it's very important that the smears get to, or the blood gets to the laboratory um, quite quickly. And, um, PCR is a test that can give very high sensitivity in that um, you, can you can pick up very small numbers of infected cells by the use of real-time PCR, and it can be used to differentiate the species. So we can differentiate um, between species um, phagocyte film and marginale, and that has been described in a, in a paper by Reinbolt in 2010. So this is the OIE manual on uh, terrestrial diseases, and again, they show that um, just that PCR is useful for the um, diagnosis of individual animals and for confirmation of freedom from um, from infection. So it's difficult to find um, any recent inf any recent publications in relation to uh, tick-borne fever or anaplasmosis in Ireland. Um, a lot of the publications go back to um, the 1970s when it was first described um, using blood smears. But um, a recent publication of the vet record or a letter to the vet record um, carried out a surveillance on uh, deer and feral goats in Northern Ireland in 2012 and showed infection um, in um, feral goats in, in, uh, with a phagocyte film. So um, this was the first case we diagnosed as well as um, this was part of our veterinary practice, and um, this was back last year when we started looking for A marginale. And um, <coughs> this farmer had been experiencing a um, situation with cows that were being bought in, buying in adult cows as replacements, coming onto his farm and getting this milk drop syndrome with high, high temperatures and um, sometimes with, a, with a, a nasal discharge. Some cows getting quite anemic and some getting jaundiced and some requiring uh, blood transfusion. So this is the, the result from that particular, um, that particular farm and we can see here that um, a, a lowish CT value of 18.83 here indicates that um, the animal is positive for the presence of A marginale in the, in the circulating blood and we tend to see these low CT values indicating a high presence of infection when we do diagnose A marginale um, using real-time PCR. 
It's just an example of a result with a, where we looked for both on a, on a separate submission to the laboratory and um, showing a positive sample for a phagocytophilum. Um, we tend to see that um, we get one or the other if, it's, if the sample is positive rather than having both, and there is some mention of co-exclusivity in the uh, literature where we don't see both species in the same animal. So we've got a relatively small sample size in that we just started testing for this disease in 2015. Uh, it's generally um, in the summer months or the warmer months when it tends to occur. And um, we have had an increasing number of submissions lately, having people uh, becoming a little bit more conscious of maybe testing for it. And the fact that the real-time PCR is now available to look for this disease uh, means that it's, it's easy and quick to get um, a definitive answer in relation to the presence or not of, merge, of um, anaplasma in the blood. So out of the samples we've tested, we've found that 23% of those has been um, positive for A marginale, 15% for A phagocytophilum, and they're surprisingly high. I suppose we have to bear in mind that it's a small sample size and also that these animals are selected based on their clinical signs and maybe um, other issues in relation to history on the farm or um, something like that. So um, I'd expect that these um, percentages would decrease as the number of samples maybe would be um, increased over time. Uh, this just maybe this just a comparison. We get a lot of similar requests. Sometimes these, the first slide I showed in relation to results showed that we also looked for um, respiratory disease viruses. They often give similar kind of picture and um, we often see, but a lot of these undiagnosed respiratory cases could potentially be um, anaplasma if the blood, EDTA blood had been tested or had been submitted for them. Um, and just, um, I suppose, in keeping with the, the theme of the um, session here and cow sites test, this isn't quite a cow site test, but it is um, the use of PCR is becoming more practical and easier to use and it's possible now to buy small PCR machines that can be used maybe on a large farm setting or in a veterinary clinic. So the diagnosis of these diseases are, are getting a little bit, um, I suppose, more accessible to practitioners. Um, just to conclude, Mr. Chairman, I suppose um, anaplasmosis appears to be easily detected using PCR, real-time PCR. It is possible to differentiate between A. phagocytophilum and A. marginale, and that has uh, significance in relation to your expected severity of disease and also um, your treatment. Um, A. marginale we have seen in our veterinary practice to be quite a severe, potentially fatal disease, and um, I believe that it's likely to be significantly underdiagnosed in Irish farms and uh, possibly um, a significant um, cause of undiagnosed non-specific disease where we see fever, uh, high fevers and um, milk drops. So um, that's our conclusions. And I'd just like to thank my colleague and, and lab manager in the lab who helped with the a collection of this um, information, um, Mikhail Nosov. So thank you very much for your attention. doing pretty well on time. Are there any questions? Okay. There's one. Hi. Um, I noticed that up here, front, <laughs> there we are. Um, I noticed that you tested for a lot of different bacterial uh, uh, constraints, but you didn't look at Lyme, nor did you look at Babesia. I've seen in co-infections with Anaplasmophages tophilum that when it's co-infected with Lyme, that you end up with a much more severe outcome of the disease. So by looking for these particular co-infections, because Exodes ricinus also carries both those pathogens, you may end up getting your answer as to why it's more severe. Yeah, you... this um, farm where we described the first case of Marginelli has also got significant problems on that farm with Babesia. So we suspect that this, uh, it occurs there as well. And, uh, but this particular case wasn't associated with red water or hemoglobin urea. But um, I accept your point, and I, you know, it's, it's probably there will be tests that we would like to add to the range of tests that we look for in, in relation to these diseases as time goes on. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.